We're really excited to be able to offer uh, the industry for the first time um, a potato with solid resistance against um, late blight, which is devastating around the world. Um, there, um, you know, potatoes have um, natural resistance to late blight, right? But unfortunately, the varieties that we tend to use for you know our fresh market consumption, as well as um, to make potato chips and French fries, don't have good durable late blight resistance. But now. With innate technology, we can take our favorite potato varieties and make them um, very late blight resistant. Um, there's lots of multiple strategies, um, which really means um, many different genes that are native to potatoes um, are known and are being tested in commercial potatoes um, around the world. Um, you know, we have a strategy that we've employed with, with innate that, um, you know, works very well. The potatoes have great resistance to late blight strains that are found in North America. Um, and as we, we move on in time, we, we have a pipeline of other generations of innate that'll come that will continue to have more durable resistance to late blight. And so the first, you know, the uh, first introduction of late blight resistance is in Gen 2 innate. Um, and, and we have a gene that, that confers resistance to late blight in potatoes. When we get to, to Generation 3 innate, we will have three genes that confer um, resistance to the potatoes. And so um, you effectively make that resistance more durable um, over time and also across geography. What it doesn't mean having late blight resistance in the potato is that you don't have to spray for uh, late blight anymore, right? So you can't abandon fungicides um, in the potato. You still, it requires an integrated pest management approach. Um, and, and for one, you know, the trait has to be protected, right? And so um, what we have to be careful of commercially is, is that we don't allow enough pressure to occur to the trait on the potatoes that the fungus can, could break it, right? So we wouldn't want strains to develop in North America that were uh, resistant to, um, to our resistance, right? Um, and so the way you, that you'll do that is, is um, there will be some fungicides applied to the crop and we will prescribe to farmers how, how they will manage that. But we expect a, about a 20 to 45% reduction in fungicides um, right now, depending on, on where you're at in, in the country. We're really excited that um, the USDA approved the Generation 2 version of the Russet Burbank of Innate. Um, we still require um, approvals from the EPA and the FDA uh, before we can commercially release um, the Generation 2 Burbank and you know, hopefully that um, is all complete by the end of next year, the end of 2016. Uh, we also have in queue the, um, the Atlantic version, so these potatoes uh, right here, and a Ranger Russet with the same technology going through the same process. And uh, we expect that they will all finish all of those processes right about the same time. Uh, these potatoes are all managed in what we call a closed loop stewardship system. And what that means is that the potatoes are highly controlled all the way from seed through commercial growing and into the markets where they're ultimately sold. Um, everybody who grows or handles an innate potato has a license to do so. And um, the channels that they're set up to be sold in are um, strategic in that um, they're not channels where potatoes can um, you know, escape into markets where, where they don't belong, which is you know, the primary concern um, of the industry, right, is if the potatoes got into a market where they're not approved and they're still regulated, um, there could be you know, trade disruptions or, um, or other things. So uh, we've, we've taken the steps to ensure that that, that can happen.